walkways are arguably one of the most used parts of your yard and the most forgotten because they're just always underfoot. In this chapter, we're going to show you how to install your own pathway, but also how to make it special. What I love about a good walkway is that it's leading me to something. I am going from point A to point B, and I've got something intentional taking me there. I call destinations in yards actual moments. So whether that moment be your outdoor garden bed, whether it is your fire pit, maybe it's your children's playhouse, whatever it is, put a sweet pathway down Make it a little bit special. Make it feel like you are going towards another secret spot in your yard. No matter what you use your walkway for, they do all follow a similar method. In this particular yard, we already sort of have a natural space to lead you from point A to point B. We've got an opening in the landscape beds and we'll be able to lay our pavers down and get to the destination. options are limitless for pavers. Whether you want to line up bricks and a herringbone pattern that leads you out, or maybe you want to go with more of a free form flagstone, whatever your aesthetic is in your yard, you could probably get a paver that's going to help it bring it all together. All right. Some other options are squares. I have actually done these <laughs> in a lot of yards. People who have kids, I always like to have a little surprise pathway, and I use these in stencil on numbers and turn it into a little hopscotch path for them. So that's why I really like the squares. So this big square might have a little bit more of a modern feel. The small square can kind of take you in more of a cottagey feel. And then this behemoth is more of a free form. Oh, it's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna lift that up for you. Uh-uh. Okay, yep. So this is more of a freeform stone. It's super heavy duty too. I really like using freeform stones in places that maybe DG or pea gravel is down. I just think it has a really sweet moment. Each of these options could work and they would give this space a completely different type of energy. Also something to think when you're choosing a stone is the type of environment you're, that you're in. And if it's gonna bother you that your stone might discolor over time, make sure that you talk to the person at your local stone yard and make sure that you're not getting something too porous. If you get a really soft stone or a porous stone and it's mixing with soil and rainwater, there's gonna be some discoloration. You want to kind of measure the length of the path that you wanna create. So before you go to the stone yard, you have a general idea of how many linear feet you need covered. If you just need to grab some magazines or a newspaper and just like set down individual magazines or newspaper pages, you can do that and that'll kind of give you an idea and then you can sort of talk about both size of your pavers and quantity. For this particular project, I went with a rectangular Indiana limestone paver, super modern. The color really matches the gravel that's already in the outdoor dining space. It matches the aesthetic of the modern exterior of her home and the minimalist fire pit area that we did out here. So it's just gonna like blend sort of seamlessly. Always before we get started, take a minute to sort of imagine your space. Helps me to get things down on paper a little bit. So what we already have existing out here in this part of the yard is the fire pit. So because we chose the rectangular pavers and there's this break here in the landscape, I think we're gonna go ahead and just start putting them in. And I want them to be a little bit off center. It's okay for a path to meander a little bit because once those are in, I wanna take a minute to plant the pathway. And I think this is just a nice finishing touch. It kind of makes you feel like you're walking into a different part. Like these plants will start to sort of weave their way a little bit closer to the pavers and kind of give further separation to the moment that has been created with the fire pit. Out here specifically, I think we'll probably stagger a little bit of Decillium Cinnamon Girl here, which is an evergreen, so it's always gonna be looking awesome. We'll do another one on this side. 
And then we'll go ahead and underplant it with lots of vinca minor. So this is a spreading ground cover that'll start to kind of grow in between these papers. And I think that's a really special sort of moment that makes you feel like you're walking through a whole new area of the yard. Now keep in mind, this is a sketch to help me stay on track with what it is, the goal that I'm moving towards. It doesn't have to end up looking exactly like this. So give yourself a little bit of freedom. This just gets your brain moving and gives you the framework for the project that you're about to complete. Because there are so many options for pavers and not just the pavers themselves, but also the formations that you put them in, you might start by just going to your local stone yard or tile shop and kind of see the formations that they have things set up in. Design options for your path formation include anything from a very straight line path. Maybe you want to add some curve to it, or maybe you just want to stagger the stones. I like to keep things simple. So for me, it's just a meandering path that leads you to your destination. If you want to get Candyland level crazy, go for it. But just keep in mind, you're going to have to buy more. It's going to take more labor, et cetera, et cetera. But before we even start digging, we need to go ahead and lay the pavers out in the formation that you want to walk in. Generally speaking, you don't want to make them so far away that you have to take a giant step or create a place where you're wearing out the ground in between the two pavers. If you're going to put in a gravel pathway and just have the pavers and set in that, maybe it won't matter as much. Since we're putting this directly into the grass, I want there to be pavers close enough in range that it feels like a natural step width. So I'm gonna play around and see how I can make it feel a little bit natural and then we can start digging. So we placed our pavers and I like the formation, so now it's about getting them in the ground. I'm gonna be taking out about a half an inch of dirt so the stones can sit in the ground and won't stick out too much. Because I chose a straight edge paver, I can use a straight edge tool and I can just come in and after I put them in the place that I want, I can sort of give myself a marker and then I'll be able to dig it out a little bit because for this purpose, I would like these to be inset in the ground. I don't want them to become a tripping hazard, so I want them to be pretty much at ground level. So that's what you can do. But who am I? I'm not your typical gal. I'm going to use this. And the handle just broke off of it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a line that I can follow. Again, because this is a straight edge, I can do so with this spatula that is not meant for this, but it's great for it. Since we're taking out this dirt, it's gonna be a little bit soft. The most important part always is to make sure that the stone itself is level. Some people use sand to accomplish this or a small bed of gravel. I didn't want to overcomplicate it. These are heavy enough and I think that we can go ahead and just pack them up with the soil itself and make them level. So these are really virtually no maintenance. You may have to edge around them when you mow or something like that, but for the most part, they're in and they're gonna be set to do what it is they do. So I like the way this looks. It is complete. It's good as is. The grass will continue to grow back around the stones that we've put in and it'll feel like they've been here forever. But I'm gonna take it a step further because I'm a little bit extra. I think it's a really special addition to a pathway to plant it. It kind of makes it feel like you were meant to walk through a little bit more interest, not something that you have to do not even something that this space necessarily needs. I just think it's gonna add a little oomph. And I'm gonna put some Distillium Cinnamon Girl on opposite sides here, and then I'm gonna underplant it with some of the Vinca Minor that we planted elsewhere. This is part of the plant palette that we have drawn on from other parts of the yard. I like it to feel all cohesive and relevant to what already exists. 
I chose two areas that I know the plants will live, that they'll get enough sun, and did it far enough away from other plants that it literally just feels like it's anchored to the pathway rather than being anchored to a different part of the yard. What we did here was we dug a hole, we amended the soil by mixing in mushroom compost and some fertilizer. Mix that soil up really nice so we can give these plants a really nice home to be put into. Now we're just digging it in. We're gonna finish the top with some pine straw mulch and suddenly our pathway is gonna look a little bit more planted and put together. And that's it, we've done it. You have now made a beautiful transition from one part of your yard to another. By choosing stones, placing them in a visually pleasing pattern, and adding plants as an added piece of interest. So I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun while you did it. Bye, I'll see you next time.